This is a three color never ending granny square and it actually works in a major spiral and this uh, kind of concept allows you not to ever have to slip stitch in order to get to the next level. You just continue to rotate. It's actually not a full uh, square. It's actually a little bit more of a rectangular but when it gets to the um, when it gets to really big sizes, you really can't tell. Like for example, you have two lines of uh, pink on this side, but you still have to do your, your second. So with every rotation of the three colors, you're actually growing by almost two inches in every direction. So this kind of pattern grows extremely quickly. So let's get started and I'm going to show you the, the center piece is actually a separate unit that we're going to build first. Then we're going to add the green and the most important part of this blanket is establishing the rectangle without it being lopsided. And really more or truthfully the second color green is the most important color. As you can see it goes around but then it starts uh, going. So we have to build it like a Tetris game here that we can't just norm we can't just we have to stop the pink for example here because the purple is not yet built and the green is not yet built so we have to keep working in increments as we work our way around so let's get started and here's the first step to make this easier for you I'm gonna show you the exact same colors here and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slip knot so uh, wrap around your finger twice back over forward back again pushing up and put your needle on so by now most of you that are probably following this is probably a newbie but understand some of the concepts. So we need chaining of four. This is counted as one. Oh yeah, this is available on my website, a step by step tutorial on to do this. You can also do this with regular one color. That's act there's been a tutorial posted for almost a year about how to do this in one color and it's a little more simpler, but the, the spiraling effect of multi multi colors is amazing. Okay, so we got their first one on here. We have to chain four. So one, this is number two, three, and four. We need to create the center uh, hole in here, and we do that by putting our needle then back into the first chain. Okay, and before I pull everything snug together, I'm going to show you a little trick to do this. And it involves your nasty finger, but in a clean kind of way. So we put it into the first stitch, what we thought we did all my personalities I keep always saying we but so before we pull everything uh, tight what I want you to do is I want you to put your nasty finger so keeping your crochet into your hand properly put your nasty finger and your thumb together like so and so when you go to pull uh, this material through you're gonna pull but it's gonna wrap around your two fingers just like so if I pull it apart you see how your fingers in the middle that is your center hole so what we need to do is now start building up to go around so I don't want to take my, my two fingers off of that piece yet because I want to start building so this is a double crochet method all the way around no matter what we're doing so to start double crochet just like a regular line we have the chain of three so one two and three so in actual fact what we're doing is we're working in between two sections here okay so we're actually going to start right there so we just chained up three that counts as one of the double crochet Okay, so that you actually see three there, but it's actually one of the double crochet. So let's go in again. So wrapping the material, double crocheting, going right into the center hole that you had your finger over. So now your center hole is actually established. So I'll pull through two and two. Okay, and let's go again. So. So when we're doing the granny squares, everything is using in groups of three. So you had your chaining up, you had your second one, and your third. So now we want to turn a corner. In order to turn corners in a granny square, you always have to chain two. Always, always, always chaining two. So that's one and two. Going into the center again, we're going to now establish the second part right there. So grabbing the material, going into the center point again and we're going to double crochet three more times. Now you'll see that the straggler, which is the leftover piece uh, that is your starting, we want to put that like it's part of the ring. And the reason for it is that when we go uh, to go crochet, we want to trap that straggler in there so you don't ever see where you started. So we just keep laying it on top every time we go by and it traps it into that position and it actually is extra security that it will not fall out. So we have our three in there, just like you see there. So we're turning a corner. Again, chaining two. Always, always chaining two. So one and two. Let's go again. So back into the center. We're now creating the 
another set of three. And we've got to put three double crochets into position for that. Okay. So now the bottom piece, so if you pull it apart, you've got three of the sides so far. And now let's create the final side. So chaining two, because we're turning a corner, going in again to the center and we'll continue to trap that straggler into position and as soon as we're done this round we can actually trim that straggler uh, because you know confidently that it's been wrapped into your ring so you will never see it okay so you have all four sides done you can see that there what's the problem you don't have this side done so what we need to do is chain two one and two you don't have this corner and what we need to do and this is the only time you're going to slip stitch in this project is that you're going to just stick it into the top of the first chaining okay grab the material pull through and through so now you've just created successfully your four uh, sides so what we need to do grab your scissors cut it about an inch or two long probably two inches to be safe grabbing your hook pulling it so it falls out pulling it tight and this is called weaving. We want to weave that bad boy into the actual edge of this square so that it never falls out. And so when you go to uh, work with this project uh, with the next layer going over top, in actual fact, you're going to be sealing this, this straggler into position. Nothing is worse than you have a beautiful blanket and you got loose strings hanging out all over the place. So try to go back right to the actual corner because the corners are where we're going to be grabbing by where every time you see a gap that's exactly where we're grabbing by so we want to continue to maintain that to keep that straggler under control so don't trim that one yet even though you may think that you're fine don't trim that one yet but we can trim the center one safely let's trim that And so we have now our center piece right there, and this is our base piece in order to start what we need to go. So this is section, I guess, number two. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to start off with the green, and we're going to uh, double, we're going to do our slip knot first, so wrap around your finger twice like I showed you before, and let's create that slip knot for here. The slip knots are really quite safe to add, adding on when you are adding a secondary color. It's actually probably a lot more safer to do. Um, I would recommend uh, for you at this point, do you see how the straggler is going across the two, the pink? We want to avoid that. This is the only time I'm going to tell you, uh, probably in any tutorial that we do, is that you should actually probably tie this together so we can hide it. So we have to pretend that one side of our edge, so let me just turn this up, just like so. Because what's happening here is we've started here and working our way around. We have to pretend that one side of the interior is actually a flat uh, panel, just like it would be a shawl or anything like a tablecloth or whatever, it has to be flat. So the actual gap right in the starting gap would actually be what we need to go at. So let's go in here, okay, so just go right into the hole, grab it and pulling it through Okay, and what I would do right at this point is grab your straggler and that str and your your extra string, and make a knot. Again, this is the only time I would recommend that that you do this uh, knot because you don't want the straggler to be hanging out. So I'm going to trim it maybe about a half inch. And it will shrink in the wash, by the way, just so you know. So. We've now tied our knot, so in order to do a double crochet, we have to chain up three. So let's chain up three. One, two, and three. So we have to maintain the configuration as if this was a flat panel. So if this was a flat panel, this gap would be right on the edge. So we have to finish it off by putting two more double crochets in it. Okay, so there's double, two double crochets. Now this is what I call the runway. So it's the runway in between the corners. So we have to jump, and the next one just happens to be a corner. And as we go with every revolution of this blanket, you're gonna, uh, the runway gets bigger, obviously, like the space between corners. So in order to do corners, we always have to put three double crochets in a row. 
and chaining two. We always chain two when we turn corners, one and two. You see that I instinctively just turned it up the other way because I knew that I was turning. Okay, and now we have the runway again, so it's chain one. So we chain one every time we're on the runway, and now we just happen to be jumping into the next corner. So again, three. So I always have a memory hook. Three, two, three. So three double crochets, two chains, and three double crochets. You know, with uh, crochet for me is all about memory hooks, and it's about uh, lingos and being able to remember. So if you can make it fun for yourself and, and instead of having to look at patterns, it's actually a lot more fun. So we're in between the runway again, so let's chain one. So now we have the pink straggler that we have tied off. We want to treat that like it was the center point of the ring. We want to grab that and making sure that every time we go wrapping that green in there that that straggler is trapped into position. This is a double reinforcement to make sure that straggler doesn't fall out. Okay, we are turning a corner, so let's do our two, going into the same hole. Okay, so now what we need to do is that we can actually go right to meeting that green again. So let's chain one, because we're in the runway, and let's go into that gap. And... We're going to do our three, and what we're going to do, we're no longer going to be cutting any strings unless you run out, out of material or whatever, but now what you want to do is pull this bad boy out, maybe about six inches out, and let it dangle, and we are going to add our next color to this bad boy. What we're going to do now is add our next color. So we have the gap coming here. And so we, ha we turned it back up to where it was because we finished here and we just turned it again to because remember I told you I want to have a solid uh, flat line in order to get all the colors started. So let's uh, slip knot this purple. By the way, these are god ugly colors and I know that. So just so you know, you don't even have to email me to tell me that they're the worst colors you've ever seen together. So you're going to slip knot and what we need to do is to fix it right in to the actual uh, first ch top of the chain of the green. So go, don't go in the in between the posts like that because you'll create a false corner. You want to do it like it's a regular. Uh, you want to fix it in like it's a regular stitch. So two strings on top, okay, and one on the bottom. Grabbing the material and pulling it and pulling it through. And now what I would recommend, again, tie that, tie the strings together. Maybe trim it about a half inch again. Okay. So you think about this. This is where you got to wrap your mind around. This is the hardest part to really kind of conceptually think of. So if this is the flat panel, Okay, don't don't look at this green yet. Just look at the pink. So you got the gap, solid, gap. Okay, so you have gaps, so you have solid, gap, solid, gap. So you want to maintain that. So if this is solid right here, if this was a gap and this is solid, this automatically has to be a gap. So what we need to do is chain up three, one, two, and three. Okay, and to create the gap, all we need to do is just double crochet and jump to the first gap over here and double crochet that. And now, see, you have, you have gap, solid, gap. And we're just going to maintain now, just like it's like everything else, just put three double crochets in a row and we chain one because we're on the runway between the corners and now the next one happens to be the corner so that's our 3-2-3 three, three configuration. Three double crochets, two single, or two chains, and three double crochets. So one and two. And we're going to
going to put three in there to make that corner. Okay, and now let's chain one. We're in the runway, so we're working between corners. My email just went off. I have my email set on it every 15 minutes because I get so much email that I never get nothing done. Okay, so we're in between the runway, so let's chain one. And now let's, we're back on the next corner, so we're going to do our 3-2-3 three, three configuration. So three double crochets, two chains, three double crochets. One, two, and three double crochets. Now, what can't you do with the never-ending square? You can never uh, sew these things together. Because you're not slip stitching, you're not going to have a uniform si uh, size in order to attach to each other. Technically, these uh, squares will never be square because of the way that we're just going in a continuous spiral. And because of that, you can't really sew these bad boys together. So if you're looking for a granny uh, square stitch uh, blanket with matching squares, um, this is not the pattern to be doing it on. So we're in the corner again, so one and two, turning a corner. Now, the, the, uh, the green is right below us, so we can't continue to go around this purple uh, anymore if there's no material underneath. So you have the green flat here, so what we have is we have one more space. So let's chain one, going into that space. And we're just going to finish off the purple, and we're going to pull. We're going to pull six inches of material about out, just like so. And we're going to drop it. So now we can't go any more purple until the green is yet established. But then we still have to get the pink in. So let's turn this back upside like this, and let's start our pink. Grabbing our pink, we're just going to do a slip knot again. And this is the last time you'll be adding pink to this thing. Um, before we had to do it in the center just to maintain to get it started we need a base in the center so if you wanted to do like a black in there you could too so let's get on to this so now you we're looking at it so pretend this green is not there again okay so you have solid gap solid gap so what's that mean the next one up there has to be a solid in order to create the solid you should just go uh, just into the gap completely so right into the purple just like so and you're going to grab the pink like so and pull it and again I would recommend that you tie these let's give that a tie and then cut that about half an inch so so we had Okay, so gap, solid, gap, solid, gap. So this has to be solid. So in order to do uh, double crochet, right, we have to chain up three. So one, two, and three. And to create the solid, we just have to go in two more times within that particular space of the purple there to create that. And see the straggler right there? I'm making sure that it stays on top so that it just instinctively gets tangled in there and lost so you don't see it. So we're now in between corners so we're just going to chain one so we always chain one in between the, on the runway and we're going to go to the next one and we're going to just do our three double crochets into position and chain one and the next one happens to be the corner so you got to really think about this this blanket grows so fast that within every rotation you're almost growing every rotation of all colors you're growing uh, almost two and a half inches in every direction so within one rotation two and a half you're almost growing a five inch uh, blanket square and so it goes really fast that's why it only takes a few weeks or a week or so to make one of these Okay, so we've just turned the corner, so we did our 3 2 3 configuration. Now going into the next one because we're on the runway. And now you can finally start seeing that the spiral is taking effect. Now, the spiral really is more noticeable if you have like a, a color that is dark um, that, is make, uh, that is really showing the spiral happening.
So the next one is the corner. So it really, the big deal is just getting this project started because now that we have everything started, um, this thing will go really simple. I just have to show you how to finish the second color, um, the, the green right in the middle. That is going to be the one to really start establishing your pattern. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just stop the pink. I'm just going to go one more. I'm just going to stop the pink at this point and because it's really not relevant because it's now just the same going all the way around. But we have to really make change. Just one second. Just hang on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so Daniel is calling me. So I was telling you that I'm going to stop here at the pink. And so when you go to stop, just pull it about six inches. So I'm going to rotate this back around to the green. And I'm going to rotate it so it's the green is actually on top because we want to continue the line across. So let's pull the green back tight onto the hook. Okay, and so what we need to do is that we need to maintain, you know how we did the solid? So let me turn it back up, solid, gap, solid, gap, solid. We need to maintain that now with the green coming across. It'll be the first time now that we're actually working our way across that particular side panel. So in order to get across to the next one, we have a solid right here. So we have to chain one as if it was a regular runway and now we're going to do our three into that one. So let's do our three double crochet. Okay, so we got our three and we're still not onto the corner piece. So we chain one and so what we need to do now is that this is the only time where we're going to be treating this particular thing as an actual corner. So you can actually tell that see how this pink is pulled over? That's why that is. Okay, so we're just going to grab the whole post, the first one, and use that as our first corner. And again, this is the only time that you're ever going to do that because this is actually establishing for the very first time all four corners on this pattern. So we put three into there, chain two, because we're turning, and put three in again. So let's put our three in. Now it does require you to maintain your strings uh, out of so that they're not tangled. It might require you to move around your balls so that they're not crisscrossing each other so that they're catching in and whatever. But yeah, because you can see that the purple one here is catching in and that's just because I just need to switch my balls off camera. <laughs> switch my balls. So we're in between the runway so that means that we just chain one in between all clumps of the three double crochet. And then we're now working on our first the corner. Okay, and then chain two because we're turning a corner. Okay, and now we just chain one, and now we're in between the runway, just like we are with anything else that we've been doing here. So that, the complicated stuff is now over. So I'm just going to help you finish off, so let's pull that gap. So I would have, if it were me and off camera, I would have followed all the way to the gap right before the pink ending. So let's turn this back around again, and catch back up with the purple, because now the purple can be done because the green is now established underneath of it. So we're in the runway now, think about this, we're in the runway so we just chain one and we just jump to the next gap. How complicated was that? It's not. It's the second color, the green, is the only one that really uh, is important to maintain. And we're just into the gap to the next one. And now that you've gone over that pink with the green to establish that first corner, all the four corners are now easily noticeable. So there's the fourth corner right there. 
So you can see just like my example, the pink is kind of pulled over. There's really not much you can do about that. That's just the way it is. And if you don't like it, lump it. But you know what? I'm sure you never even noticed that on my my one that I showed you before. So um, once you get to a large size, you know, all of the colors kind of meld in together. So you don't really see any abnormalities unless you've done something outrageous. So we're turning our first corner with the purple. You can really start seeing now that the the spiraling is taking effect and the purple being dark is actually making it very obvious which is actually not a bad idea and maybe these colors aren't so bad together but it wouldn't be something that I would do a big one of that's for sure so now it's just a matter of working our way around and every time you get to a corner you just have to do your 323 configuration and what I do when I'm off camera uh, is that I always make sure that everything ends so I would have brought the the green to the gap underneath and then the purple would have been brought next to it. So that's almost like a lined up of like on an angle of everything just waiting to go. So this is your never ending granny square and we did have one straggler right in here and because we tied it we can safely trim that. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty excellent. And you will find with these blankets too is that there's a good side and a bad side so you can decide what you like when you go to lay this on your bed. So there's your never ending granny square. This here is my never ending blanket and you can see in the center we started off with the green and I show you how to get all the colors going. So then you eventually as you pull out you can actually start seeing that there's an actual spiral effect happening. And that's why I call it the never ending granny square because there is no place on this thing that we're actually slip stitching. We're just continually going in a continuous circle. So the actual blanket is not technically square. Uh, but you know what? It's so close that you would never notice. So how do you finish one of these bad boys off? If you look at the corners, you can see that they're actually perfect. But we have to choose one quarter finally at the end on where we're going to actually be doing it. And in actual fact, I chose over here. So what's going to happen here is you're going to come around the colors. Okay, you're going to come across and then you're going to have to choose which side to stop. So in this case, I just did my red here. And in the next one, you can see that there should have been a gap here, right? But there isn't. So I just chained over one, and then I just double crocheted in. And then when I came across with the green, I just did it like the red there. I just finished it off. And then what you do is you just weave in the end so that you can't see it. Very, very simple. You could do it that way. And um, with the three colors, you have to really do it this way so that you won't end up with... Like it's so hardly unnoticeable when you're looking at the entire project. You can see that you really can't tell. Like unless I'm pointing it out to you, you probably wouldn't have been able to see that. And uh, that's how you finish it off. Very, very simple. And this blanket took me two weeks to actually make. And it's fabulous. I just love this blanket.